find out what's happening around Westmoreland County. Listen to Westmoreland Community Connections Sundays at 7 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock p.m. Hi, this is Chad Ammon, President and CEO of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. I host a weekly show that talks about what's happening in our community. If you have a not-for-profit organization, call WHJB at 724-216-1200 to be considered for a future show. Westmoreland Community Connections, Sundays at 7 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock p.m. Only on WHJB. Welcome to Westmoreland Community Connections, a look at issues and happenings on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. Here now is your host, Chad Ammond, President and CEO of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. Hello and welcome to Westmoreland Community Connections. I'm your host, President of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce, Chad Ammon. Uh, I am delighted today to have on the show Donna Lancashire and Brandon Komar. Uh, they are with the Dairy Township Ag Fair. The Ag Fair is coming up uh, soon. Uh, Brandon, thanks very much for being on the show. Uh, well, thank you for having me. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to have you on because I grew up in Dairy and I've been to the Ag Fair uh, several times and and uh, I, I want to learn a little bit more about it. So let's uh, let's give a little bit of the uh, for the listeners. Let's give uh, a little bit of your background and how uh, how you got to connected with the fair and and what do you do? Well, uh, I started with the fair. Oh, it's probably been seven eight years ago. Helping out with grounds and maintenance, helping set up. Uh, usually spend all July setting up the fair, uh, and of course tearing down. Just always like dealing with livestock animals and everything of that sort. Um, and we just have been short on people the past few years and I just started going up in the roles and uh, started with the executive board and got into farther making some more decisions and uh, just the opportunity came in and I had the time and the free time and the will so I decided to be fair president and uh, organize everything with a lot of help from various various uh, volunteers. And you serve as you uh, you serve as president of the uh, of the ag fair. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've been president for two years now, and uh, we're we're slowly growing. And Donna, you serve as superintendent of the ag fair. And how did how what is that role entail? And uh, and how did you get connected with the with the fair? Hi. Good morning. Um, I started about about five years ago at the fair. My children show animals at dairy fair. Okay. And I just got wrangled into helping organize some of the shows and helping with maintenance work th- during the week of the fair. So if any problems sh- pop up with within the sheep and the goat barns, I'm usually the one that they go to to help solve those problems. You got wrangled into the fair. I got wrangled into the fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happens a lot. You, that's that's what you know. You said your you uh, your your kids uh, helped you get into into the fair, and that's that that happens often, right? Yes, it does. We our our fair is centered around kids we have a lot of kids that show animals at the fair and um it's very a kid-friendly show for the kids you know we do a lot of work with the kids and um so i don't have any problems helping out with all that well you introduced your yourselves uh but let's let's step back and talk a little bit about the fair how did the fair get started what what does the fair entail and uh what is all of that stuff i i I guess as as president brandon i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna put this to question to you, right? Mm. Uh, the fair started in 1987, uh, and it actually started with the efforts of Chucky Penish and Randall Kendall, Campbell. Uh, the fair was granted space to set up at one of the Dairy High School practice fields. Uh, they started with a couple small tents, a few local vendors and exhibitors. Uh, by 1990, the fair had, had grown out, outgrown their space at the high school and was in need of more space to expand. Uh, approached by the fair, uh, Shorty Dorica, Joseph Shorty Dorica, and Mary Dorica, who owned a farm just outside of New Dairy, both had grown up on farms and have been involved with 4-H's use. Uh, they knew the importance of promoting agriculture and providing learning experiences for today's youth. After careful thought and consideration, Shorty and Mary decided to donate 10 acres of their farm to the fair. Uh, with being said, uh, we, they, we utilized the uh, property for six days of the year in the month of July uh, and it was all actually on a gentleman's agreement handshake um, uh, unfortunately in August of 2004 Shorty passed away and Sarah Noon uh, as part of her fair as part of her fair project designed a memorial garden to honor Shorty uh, so that's why in the middle of our fairgrounds we have a nice flower bed 
with benches and memorial shorty for everything he has done for the organization yeah right um we have grown since then we're now on 15 acres and we look at usually bringing in approximately <coughs> 5,000 people a year to our small event 5,000 people each year yes sir wow Wow, that's uh, that's that's a lot of people uh, coming. Where, where, do you under you have any idea of where where people are coming from? Are they mostly coming from the maybe the eastern part of the county and the dairy area, or are they coming from all over southwestern Pennsylvania? Uh, we have a good bit coming from all over southwestern Pennsylvania. I think last year we had a uh, little um, audit done, and we had people from thirteen counties in five states. Okay, right. So we are bringing people from. From all over. So the fair, I, I understand that the fair has changed a, a little bit on the timing. When when is the when is the fair going to be held this year? This year, the fair is going to be held July fifteenth through the twenty first. We're usually uh, the week after Fourth of July, but uh, due to some issues with circus, carnival, um, and tents, we ended up having to move farther one week. Oh right. Well, well so you you rent the tents. Uh, from a from another carnival or, uh, or uh, a, we a go fair? through uh, yeah a company in Pittsburgh yeah right yeah right. one downfall with the tents is we always get bad weather so hopefully with us moving one week it helps yeah, a lot right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what 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 is the favorite part of the fair for you uh, probably the favorite part for me was actually seeing uh, the smiles and enjoyment on the kids face okay right uh, them enjoying themselves that that's the biggest thing I get out of it. Donna, what's the what's the favorite part of the fair for you? I, I'm with Brandon. I like to watch all the kids because the kids at the fair, if you if you stand back and watch them, they have such a good. Um, they all get along well together. They help each other out. Um, if you, on show days the kids are holding each other's animals, they're helping each other, and it's really good to see kids coming together for one big you know well a couple days just to help each other and. There was really never any kind of fighting or arguing. They all just seemed to really get along and just help each other out to come, you know, to do what they need to do. Right, right. So what are some of the events that are the, the high-profile events at, at, the, at the Ag Fair? Uh, one of the biggest ones we usually have is um, we do antique tractor pulls in rodeo. They have a course they set up and uh, get some old antique tractors, and they go around the course, and it's timed event. Uh, and then we also have them uh, hooked to a sled and have competition pulls, see who can do, who you can pull to sled the farthest. We have horse shows. We have two nights of horse shows. Um, so, what, <clears throat> explain to me what a horse show does. What, like, what for the listeners? Like, what <laughs> you know, you you you, you mentioned the horse show, but what what um, what is the uh, what is the uh, a, hor- a horse show is there's multiple events in a horse show. There's timed events okay. like barrel racing, keyhole racing. And then there's the um, just judging shows where it's uh, Western Pleasure, um, English events, you know, things like that. Okay. All right. So it, it, are the people riding the horses or? Yes. Or, yeah. Yes. Okay. They're, yeah, they're riding the horses. We have one day of um, the horses are shown, which, which is their halter. They're just being led into the show yeah. and they're being judged on their confirmation. Um, just that one day, but the other days for the horse shows, they're the timed events and the, the riding judging shows. You're listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. I'm your host, Chad Ammon, president of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. Our guests today are Donna Lankenshire and Brandon Komar. Brandon is the president and Donna is the superintendent of the Dairy Ag Fair. If you want to get uh, a little bit more information about the Dairy Ag Fair, you can go on to dairytwpagfair.com. Uh, that's Dairy twpagfair.com that's dairy township ag fair uh, or if you want to get uh, uh, some some direct information you can call brandon directly at 724-989-5022 brandon we, we before we went uh, to to the information about the ag fair we were talking about the events and we talked we stopped at the horse fair i, I got into the what what is a, exactly is a horse fair uh, or or the horse uh the horse show but what are some of the other events that are happening at the ag fair uh tuesday affair we have um a power wheels demo derby uh, and that's actually pretty neat we have 
kids in little battery powered power wheels and they just go around for 15 minutes and wrecking each other <laughs> uh also that night we have pedal tractor pulls and uh we have all the youth and actually uh females can also do it uh you can get on a pedal tractor and you can try to pull a set as far as you can get um on wednesday night we have a quad radio and it's a uh, timed course obstacle course uh bring your quad out and see what best time you can get in the course and so, what are what are some of the cor- what are what are some of the hurdles in the course? Uh, doing donuts, going around cones, barrels. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, we had we ran over some tires and stuff like that. Just nothing of big scale due to insurance reasons, but yeah. enough to have fun with. Right, right. Or what are some of the other events? Yeah, Sunday we have a car show. Uh, I believe this year the Line X is sponsoring it. So the Ag Fair started in 1987. Uh, was it was it still um, basically a week long back then, or was it just a couple of days? I mean, you, you, it's going to uh, be from the uh, July fifteenth to the twenty first. Uh, when it when it started, was it uh, was it as as robust as it is now? No, when it first started, it was just a few day event with um, youth showing their livestock and just a few small vendors. Uh, within the past fifteen years, it has pretty much grown pretty good uh, we're now sitting on 10 acres 15 acres and uh, we're, we're looking for more room actually we're, we're expanding pretty well oh right 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 so is the uh, future farmers of America uh, included in the in in the fair at all I mean you obviously you guys uh, have mentioned a couple of times that you're you're working in the kids and I, I would imagine I, I I think I saw a study that uh, in in the agriculture industry uh there's a pretty aging population of of workers how are you how are you incorporating the kids in to make sure that they are the next generation of people that are working in in the agriculture industry well the first answer would be the ffa is still involved we still have the uh, dairy township or dairy uh, high school ffa chapter still involved with the organization uh, as well as the alumni they do help us organize and the kids do help us set up. Mm. Um, but as far as continuing the education for the youth to be in agriculture, we have a lot of kids that have stepped up, helped us, and that are involved in organizing our events. Um, Donna, you have anything more you want to add to that? I think with um, the agriculture, the kids are getting really big with um, their breeding programs for showing okay. their animals. Uh, you know, with the, the di- different genetics. Um, with their animals, because one percent of the population um, in the United States are actually involved in agriculture, and we feed the world. Right. So, and but you know, the farmers are in a really hard position right now with the with the big industries with farming, and in our little area here, it's you know the kids are just doing it on small scale. But some of the animals that they're developing are they're they're wonderful animals. They're, they're they compete can compete at state levels. So our little area is really showing what they can do. You're listening to the Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. We're talking with Donna Lancashire and Brandon Komar. Uh, They are both with the Dairy Township Ag Fair that's going to be hosted on July 15th to the 21st. We'll be right back after these messages. This is Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. If you have a suggestion for a topic or if your nonprofit organization would like to be featured on this program, call us during regular business hours at 724-216-1200. Welcome back. You're listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. I'm your host, Chad Ammon, president of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. I'm delighted today uh, to uh, to welcome all the listeners back. Uh, we have Donna Lancashire and Brandon Komar. Uh, they are key individuals with the Dairy Township Agricultural Fair. Uh, that's going to be held July 15th to the 21st. Before we went to the break, we were talking about some of the events, some of the uh, the horse show and all of those things uh, but Donna tell me a little bit about the bands I mean even if you're not even if you're not a person that is m- maybe uh, a, a rich history with agriculture everybody loves music right so you can come out to the fair and uh, listen to the bands um, I think every night we have a band um, starting on Mon- um, starting on Sunday night we have Scott Shelby at seven o'clock 
Monday we have Scott Shelby at 7 o'clock. Scott Hall, sorry, on uh, Monday night. Um, Tuesday we have an open stage. Wednesday night we have Patsy Cline tribute artist and the voice of the stage of Johnny Cash. <laughs> oh yeah, Johnny Cash and, uh, and 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 you said Johnny Cash and Patsy Cline. That's that's great. Yeah. Uh, Friday we have the Andy Davis band with Catherine Rose opening opening the stage. And Friday night we also have our fireworks after the Andy Davis band plays. And Saturday we have at seven o'clock. We have saddle up. Saddle up, nice, nice. So, uh, w well, you you mentioned one was the open stage. Does that mean that if there's a listener out there that's that, or is that the name of the band? No. Oh. No. Uh, Tuesday open stage. Anybody can come sing, sing their heart out. Oh, okay. Uh, perform. Right. Right. Uh, we have a DJ that comes and he'll set everything up, and all you have to do is bring your voice. Well, I wanted to make sure that uh, you know if 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 that was the name of the band. If there's a listener out there, I mean, they might uh, they might say, hey, you know what? I'm going to come over to the uh, Dairy Ag Fair. What 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 night is that? That that's uh, Tuesday night. At that's 7 Tuesday PM. night. Yep, Tuesday night. Well, you, I, I'm imagining, I'm imagining that. Uh, you know, sitting on a, a number of different boards and, and planning events and all of those things, I, I would imagine that there are some sponsors for the for the agricultural fair. Um, well, let's let's make sure that we're recognizing those people that are contributing to the uh, to the to the event and to uh, to make sure that they are they're getting their recognition. Sunday is sponsored by Linex Electrobe. Uh, Wednesday is sponsored by Bullseye Gun Vault. Thursday is Farm Bureau Day, and the Farm Bureau is actually bringing in um, numerous different uh, seminars and stuff to try to get the agricultural into the, into the public uh, persuasion. Uh, I know they are looking at doing some safety seminars and stuff like that. Friday is sponsored by Graviac Chevrolet and Performance Center. Uh, and we have numerous other small sponsors. Uh, there's way too many to list oh <laughs> well well my, I, I guess if you uh if you go to the fair they're gonna be uh they're gonna be recognized with signs and all of that stuff um brandon tell me or maybe 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 donna this is uh this is one of those things that as of uh, as a as a guy that has four kids how much does it cost to get into the fair do you have a do you have a a, a, a weekday a week pass or or something like that how, how much is it to get in we have weekly passes available and they are good for four people to get in the fair all week and they cost twenty five dollars uh, either get a hold of a fair member get a hold of me um, shoot me an email shoot shoot me a message on Facebook either or we can get a hold of you get passes taken care of but the actual cost to get into fair is three dollars per person kids four and under are free right well. we have some discounts during <clears throat> some of the days um, I know on Farm Bureau Day if you have a Farm Bureau card you can get a dollar off per person per entry uh, I believe Wednesday is our um, senior citizen day so as long as you show your senior citizen card you can get a dollar off and I believe also Friday is uh, Food Bank Day. If you bring a canned food, you can get a dollar off a mission also on Friday. Oh, right, right. Well, let, let's get let's get into some of the the vision of the fair. Uh, what what would you guys think would be super successful like this year i mean july 15th to the 21st if 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 it's the uh the 22nd and you're all sitting together and you say wow this really went well what what would be the uh what would be the the things that you would say that went well for the fair this year to have a week without rain oh really <laughs> uh i'd probably say it'd be successful as long as everybody that came had fun uh, the kids, kids took something home with them that they learned about agriculture, where their milk came from, where their meat comes from. Uh, as long as everybody had a good experience, I'm happy. Okay. Well, and 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 keeping with that vision part, what what do you think the 
the impact that you've had on not just Derry Township, not just the eastern part of the of the county, but all of southwestern Pennsylvania. What is the impact that you've had on on Westmoreland County with the fair? Why why do you keep doing this? I mean, you you have to have you have to have that piece in your gut that that says, man, I, I really want to do this next year and the year after and the year after and all of that stuff. What what keeps you what keeps you thriving? I'd probably have to say the love of agricultural and uh, just the kids having fun. Kids learning and having fun. How about you, Donna? I think that's the same for me. I, I, I grew up on a farm. I, ha- I still have a small farm. My kids really enjoy showing their animals at the fair, and I love watching the other kids show the animals at the fair. And, you know, we do a lot of work at the fair, but at the end of the day, it's all worth it. Great. Great. Uh, you're listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. I'm your host, Chad Ammon, president of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. We're talking with Donna Lankshire and Brandon Komar. Uh, Donna is the superintendent, uh, and Brandon is the president of the Dairy Township Ag Fair. Uh, if you want to go on uh, their website and learn a little bit more, uh, go on to dairytwpagfair.com, or uh, you can call Brandon directly, uh, 724-989-5022. Uh, Donna and, and Brandon, we're wrapping up the show. Uh, what what do you want to leave for the listeners that uh, that that is the summary of of the fair and how are you going to get them there you know, our, our fair is a great family event for the week you could bring your family out we have rides we have animals you can get dinner we have, we have a good time right right Brandon any any last thoughts I uh, just want everybody to come out, have fun. Once again, uh, we are July 15th to the 21st. Uh, we have plenty of food vendors. We have monster truck rides. We have plenty of events. Uh, check our schedule online, and there will also be rack cards dispersed uh, around outside the county, inside the county. Um, worst case scenario, hit us up on Facebook, send a message. I can get a schedule over to anybody. Very good. Very good. Donna Lankenshire, Brandon Komar, uh, Dairy Agri- uh, Agricultural Fair. Uh, if you want to jump on the uh, website, it's dairytwpagfair.com. Uh, it's July 15th to the 21st. Donna and Brandon, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to Westmoreland Community Connections on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. Join us next week, same time, same place, for another edition of Westmoreland Community Connections. Thanks for listening, everyone. This has been Westmoreland Community Connections, a look at issues and happenings in and around Westmoreland County. Join us again next week on Classic Hits 107.1 WHJB. Find out what's happening around Westmoreland County. Listen to Westmoreland Community Connections, Sundays at 7 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock p.m. Hi, this is Chad Ammon, President and CEO of the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. I host a weekly show that talks about what's happening in our community. If you have a not-for-profit organization, call WHJB at 724-216-1200 to be considered for a future show. Westmoreland Community Connections, Sundays at 7 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock p.m. Only on WHJB.